Welcome back. Now we're taking a special trip to Montreal for a look at one of the more iconic residential buildings in the world. Habitat 67 was originally built as the Canadian Pavilion in the 1967 World's Fair by famed architect Moshe Safdie. It was created to make us rethink the very concept of apartment living in the city. But as you'll see, it's just an exciting place to live with ample shared and private outdoor space, plus beautiful views of both the city and the St. Lawrence River. See for yourself. Hi, my name is Dinu Bumbaru. I'm Policy Director with Heritage Montreal and I welcome you to Habitat 67, one of the most unique and outstanding residential complexes in the world. It's the work of architect Moshe Safdi. Habitat is located in a strip of land that was originally created as an icebreaker to protect the harbour of Montreal, the St. Lawrence River on one side, the old city and the old port, Mount Royal on the other. It's an outstanding feature of the cityscape as well as a beautiful piece of architecture. In the 60s, there was a general concern about how people are going to live in growing cities. Moshe Sabdi, in his student's project at McGill University, developed a thesis on three-dimensional housing complex to provide each family, each unit, with outdoor space. The original project was much larger, and then they chose to reduce it to a prototype to rethink how people can live not just as unit in a big compound, but as part of a community. Now let's go underground, walk together, and I'll show you what it's about. When Safdie worked on this idea, he started playing with Lego and modules and so on. You can see how the blocks are not just assembling like a pile of things, but they're arranged in a way to leave open vista. The material is concrete. In French, brutalisme refers to the rawness of the material that are exposed here. They haven't hidden the concrete, so it's in the état brut, which is in the raw condition, in quite a nicely finished way. The project of Habitat included landscaping, and it has a diversity of features, like this roundabout here with the ash trees around it, as well as the fountain behind. The grounds is not just an accessory to the project, it's an integral part of creating this living environment. Now that we've talked about the building, the project, the grounds, let's go and see how it is to actually live in one of the units in Habitat 67. Hey Dino, how are you? Sure. How are you doing? Very Sarah? good. I'm Welcome. Welcome. Have a look at the apartment. Let's go. Here we go. Your coffee. Mm. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So Richard, how is it to live in an iconic building like Habitat 67? It's a great new adventure. Uh, you know, I'm 53 years old and this building is now uh, 51 years old. And I've been seeing this building in Montreal since I'm the age of five. And I've always been fascinated by it. But it's livable. Definitely, definitely. That's the beauty of it. How many unit module do you have? Uh, we have here three uh, modules. Uh, so, and the unusual part is you go from the top floor where we have the uh, living room and mm -hmm. then you go down to the where we are now, to the dining room, the kitchen. And then on the third models, you, you do have the, uh, the master bedroom and a small uh, living room. One of the idea of uh, Moshe Sabdi was to give a garden to everybody. How do you feel about it? with your own terrace, but also your neighbor. I have a kitchen outside and I do some barbecue and I invite some friends. We, we say hello from one terrace to the other and we see our friends. And it's, it's something very unique that you don't see in a typical uh, building where yeah, you have sure. balconies, exactly. A box so like the way it's built, um, there's something, there's a closeness, but then again, intimacy. And the sky is big. The sky? The sky is big, we're the talking about the but the sky, <laughs> the sky is you know, big, yes. Every terrace is open to the sky, it's not exactly, underneath. Exactly. There's a feeling of these uh, hilltop town in Italy or in, yeah. in Greece or yeah. in Spain, you know, yeah. somehow it connects to a very ancient way of establishing a, a place for a community somehow. Mm -hmm. But somehow it worked. Definitely. 51 years after, people like me and people all around Edita, because the people that live here, live here for a long time. They just fell in love with the sense of community and friendship around this uh, building. And it's uh, what Moshe Sadi did in the 60s is working very well and even more today than before, maybe. So, well, uh, Richard, thank you very much for uh, welcoming us. My house is your house, so whenever you want to be back, you're uh, welcome here. Thanks. <laughs> <A> pleasure. <laughs> From the beginning, 
Habitat 67 has fascinated people. Today, it's still a marvel, an architectural wonder, but also a lesson for the future of cities, not just for the 60s, but for today. We hope you have enjoyed the visit of Habitat 67. Thank you very much for your attention and explore the world.